Cancer is essentially a genetic disease at the cellular level. What I mean by that is that cancer comes from normal cells that get damaged over a lifetime of that patient somehow by exposure to different substances that damage the genes, that damage the DNA inside the cells. The genes in that cell then become altered in such a way that the cell then becomes able to grow abnormally and metastasize or spread to other organs. One of the most important things for us to do is to try to understand the biology, how a cancer evolves so that we can find the accurate heals within the cancer makeup that we can target. This is the era of uh, advanced technology. One of the things which we are developing every single day is novel ways to understand and look at a disease. Just this year, the EpiCancer, just this summer in fact, the EpiCancer Center uh, purchased a next generation DNA sequencer. This next generation DNA sequencer will allow us to again take DNA from one individual patient uh, and analyze it and sequence the entire genome in literally a three week period of time. Which means we can look at 25,000 genes in a normal cell. We can also look at all of those genes at the same time in a cancer cell. So knowing the biology of normal stem cells and cancer stem cells will give us uh, ways to figure out differences in these two cells so that we can only kill cancer stem cells and not kill normal stem cells. Unfortunately, chemotherapy affects all rapidly dividing cells, so it does have a lot of side effects for the patient. And what we're really trying to get to is to affect more of the tumor cells and less so the normal cells. But I imagine, and, and what I, I think is going to be the future, hopefully in the near term, are customized therapies for individuals that target the tumor and leave the patient minimally affected. So with these new technologies, new knowledge, I think this next decade is going to come up with what we call personalized medicine. Personalized medicine is one size does not fit all. The future is taking the discoveries of the genetic changes that occur in, in cancer cells and then developing a drug to treat that abnormal gene and then testing that in patients and offering that to patients. That will become uh, quite likely within our lifetime and very soon a part of how uh, cancer patients will be treated. Our plans are actually to put in a new cancer research tower, a 10-story building which will allow us to consolidate cancer researchers who are currently at UNMC in seven different buildings and put them together in one building where they can actually mingle together, talk to each other to help each other's research develop faster, quicker, more effectively and more successfully. If you have the clinicians next to the researchers, then the issues that the clinicians face in treating cancer in patients then become a priority for the researchers. Translational research is, people talk about it being bench to bedside, but it can also be bedside to bench. It really is comprised of a dialogue between clinicians who are treating patients and basic scientists who are researching a disease to identify the problems that we think that we can address in a way that is directed towards improving patient care. This is a continuum where we are doing research, but we are at the same time taking lessons from it into the clinic. Apley has played a tremendous role in putting together both the people and the technologies together uh, within the last several years. We think that in these coming decades, with the help of these technologies and knowledge and the cooperative interdisciplinary research which is going on, we are going to understand cancer much better. So we want patients and people in our communities, in our state, in our region, around the world to imagine a time when cancer is not a deadly disease. We want people to imagine a time when cancer is a diagnosis where it can be offered therapy to make it a chronic illness. We want people to imagine even a cancer-free world 